Okay. Well, there is a saying to err is to be human. I sometimes have to devote 20 hours of production time a day, two, three days in succession. About 4 a.m. in the morning, I had to do my prepared notes, x prime equals x minus vt over the square root of 1 minus vt uh, squared over c squared. The scribbled 2 without my reading glasses became a t. Uh, may have been because I wanted to discuss that more and more experts write uh, in their relativity per x prime equals the term x minus vt over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Uh, for non-mathematics scientists, engineers, etc., you can't violate the fundamental principle of mathematics by sliding over the uh, x into the numerator of the fraction. Uh, if you rationalize per fundamental math and say a minus bc over d, you cannot slide the a into the numerator bc and have a minus bc over d. That does not equal ad minus bc over d. If you separate them and rewrite ad over d minus bc over d, you will obtain a minus bc over d. Okay? So, to err is to be human. What is really important is Einstein's supporters get into the habit of whatever is presented has to be correct. Uh, we believe that is what physics is and must be. Realize Einstein's philosophy was, quote, to obtain the result and for universal phenomena, you must think rationally and use his mathematics. Especially that little c is the ultimate universal velocity. Say what? Realize there is phase velocity and group velocity with velocities that are greater than c. The supporters of Einstein say those motions don't count because they do not, quote, transport information. Just a minute, please. The motion of light has a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters. The phase motion of light can have that or greater speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters. Velocity per Galileo is V equals D over T. Velocity equals the distance per unit of time. The velocity of C equals D over T. The velocity of phase motion when traveling, especially through a medium, routinely exceeds the velocity of C. That velocity, D over C, routinely is greater than the velocity of C. Group velocity, universal expansion velocity, and how, how much tremendous mass is in a galaxy in the expansion of the universe as they say, is greater than C. And you have then a spin-off from what I proposed and put forward to Einstein, and that is my finite particle theory with velocities equal to or greater than the velocity of C. I did this per my... Uh, Ultramodern capital C transformation equation. Capital X equals capital X prime. Your resultant. Capital X prime equals capital X. Get ahead of myself. I want to do this in 15 minutes. Capital X prime equals capital X minus the overall quantity of v, the 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 numerator vt over the denominator the square root of 1 minus the term v squared over c squared. This is capital C squared. Keep that in mind.
my capital C transformation equation, where capital C is equal to or greater than the velocity of little c. That then theoretically at least breaks the, the light barrier, VLB. Now, a spin-off from my finite particle theory, which I presented and defined, and that is uh, we are finding always finer and finer subatomic particles, which have less and less mass. So therefore, in future years, in the laboratory, when my rho prime equals m prime v prime r is found to equal your rho equals mvr, you set r to unity, and then as my m prime becomes finer and finer towards the an infinitesimal particle, if my rho prime equals your rho, then my v prime must be greater than your v. No. Einstein agreed with yours truly on the validity of my capital C transformation equation and that he said, well, like when, as far as finding finer particles and rho prime equaling rho. And I said, well, right now, they say they're obtaining particles they can excel that equal or approach light. But I think this was in 1955. I think by 1975, like at CERN, they will be able to have rho primes equal to rho with m prime, you know, less than m and therefore v prime uh, measured greater than uh, little c. Now, a spin-off of my finite particle theory is what they call tachyons, where theoretically, yeah, getting towards instantaneous action at a distance, uh, and uh, that it's greater than the velocity of c. Now, um, the uh, support, cover-up artists or supporters of Einstein say, yeah, that don't count uh, as far as like phase velocity and group velocity because it doesn't transmit information. Just a minute. Galileo put forth, defined V equals D, distance per unit of time. Motion is motion. So if the motion of light, its speed, and the motion of a phase velocity is speed, and then the motion of speed per unit of time is velocity, and the motion of the uh, speed of phase or group velocity per unit of time is velocity. You can't change that. Just a minute, please. You, regardless of uh, what you can add as characteristics uh, uh, to the motion, uh, so V remains per unit of time. And I think that the, when you say velocity, it's descriptive per Galileo. V remains per unit of time. Further, please realize that theoretically, in 1955, I proved my capital X prime equals capital X minus VT over the square root of 1 minus V squared over capital C squared, where, of course, capital C is equal to or greater than little c, the velocity of light. Einstein agreed that my capital C transformation equation is correct and representing of my faster than light FTL breaking the line breaking the light barrier BLB futuristic mathematical physics now 
there occurred, well, I, they say truth is stranger than fiction. To my surprise, Einstein said, I don't care what Hoover says. He agreed with me that scientists should be able to work together towards uh, resolving a universal phenomenon. And I had a basic uh, proposal that appears to be valid at that time, and I think now I have it proven, of a unified field theory. Now, he had been working most of his life to try to uh, obtain a valid unified field theory. You see, they say, they say Einstein did this, that, and the other thing. Einstein, I realized, was borrowing others' work. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt because E was MC squared. Then, pardon me, Anna and I, on a um, report, proved that Olinto, O L I N T O, de Preto, capital D, capital P R E T O, capital P R. Capital D E, capital P R T T O, two years before Einstein at a prestigious science academy put forward E equals M V squared. Einstein worked with the Plato's cousin, his closest friend in the patent office. They all knew each other. They would discuss the Plato's uh, research and futuristic. Mathematical physics. The Plato actually worked with a reasonable answer of the amount of energy you obtain per tons of coal of energy. He used E equals M V squared when Einstein wrote his papers. He copied the Plato and he put E equals M V squared. Nowadays, they say. It's E equals MC squared. And yeah, that's what Einstein wrote. That's what he, No. He wrote E equals MV squared. And on his original paper, you see, he flunked mathematics. And then his wife to be, uh, uh, Marek, and uh, the great mathematician, uh, Minkowski reviewed, Minkowski especially reviewed, and completed Einstein's mathematical physics. Uh, Einstein's wife worked for, see, Einstein was really the greatest plagiarist in history. I gave him the benefit of doubt because he equals mc squared. But a uh, mathematics professor who's a mathematics historian, wrote a book proving that Olinto de Preto, two years before Einstein put forward, E equals M, he even said C squared, but it's actual papers, E equals MV squared, and it was signed by Maliba Marek, and she used her, her, uh, her name, original name, that they don't, Use now. Whenever she signed something official, she signed for her, I think it was uh, Slovakian uh, heritage. These are all true facts. Now, those that cover up for Einstein and try to keep the propaganda of him being the originator, he's Einstein could not put forward the field equation for the general theory of relativity. Years went by. Um, David Hilbert, considered the or one of the top mathematical mathematicians, he finally put forward field equations for the general theory of relativity. Einstein he sent Einstein a copy of his written that he was going to present. David Hilbert 
presented them. Five days later, Einstein gave a lecture verbatim what Hilbert wrote. Those who try to cover up for Einstein say, oh, Einstein's a genius. Hilbert copied Einstein. Why would the world's top mathematical uh, mathematicians need Einstein who flunked mathematics and had and then uh, uh, Malibu Merrick and Mikowski said, we'll get into physics Why and, and did his review in physics, mathematical physics. Why would Hilbert need Einstein? And five days afterwards, Einstein presents exactly the same thing. You understand? Absolute true facts. Einstein put forward a unified field theory. I went to Ireland to the Royal Academy of Science in Ireland to personally talk to those who knew Einstein, and they said it took them almost two years to convince Einstein to retract it because it was incorrect. They never mentioned that. He tried a unified field theory, but it was incorrect. They said, if you don't retract it, they'll begin to say, well, it's, it, you're, you're so much an error, begin to doubt your other supposed work that you say you originated. You understand? So he retracted. These are absolute true facts. And now I'm a somewhat retired scientist and inventor. I invented a Xerox, if you are like, so Francis New York. Used to work in the Experiment Development Lab. Put forward uh, Xerox. I mean, four years high school and three A's and fixed the math. It used to be Zerone. I do Pont Amores. Had the greatest scientists on the program. I used to listen to them. Zerone, Z R O N E. Delete the E, Xerox. Extra-infinitum mathematical physics, Xerox, no, the elite, the end, Xerox, E-R-O-X, yeah. Went to a patent attorney, he says, top, top work. And another $250, I goes, what for? He says, well, you get, only way you get a patent is from Washington, D.C. That's Hoover's hometown. I was in a vicious life and death with that criminally insane Jack Hoover. It was the power, you better believe it, I know. I was there at the Ambassador Hotel for Robert Kennedy. I was the gentleman who stood up in his brain trust session and said, I say he should debate Scott Lee McCarthy and explain why he did debate, and he will win, and he did win. Now, the only thing he had to do was keep him alive. And I told him face to face, not once, twice. I talked to him like a father. Bobby, you have to stick to the itinerary, because I knew Hoover would never let somebody fire him from that position. Hoover got a Judas goat to lead him through a commercial kitchen. Why two guns and all those shots? Because Hoover figured that Bobby wouldn't refuse doing it my way. They'd have to get me before they could get him. Do you understand who I really and by what I have really achieved, absolute true facts, put this on a voice stress analyzer, prove absolute true facts. Well, now, I'm a summary retired scientist and inventor. My main interest and challenge is the discipline of theology, theology of all the beliefs. And I would do a little explanation, say, you're a preacher, you're a preacher, preacher, doc. Well, I am now preacher, doc, is my main interest and challenge on the internet, an internet preacher. And... Uh, I say what Christmas in a couple of days. Thank you and God bless.